Hi everybody, Janet String Theory here. Today I wanted to talk to you about your little bits and pieces that you have, leftover yarns that are sitting hopefully in a bowl bringing you joy. Um, but it's like, you know, having a full box of crayons with all the different colors you can add. Use them to add a stripe to something. You can make pom-poms. You can put cool tassels on your shawls or fringe on your scarves. There's all sorts of fun things you can do with them. But if you want to turn them into a project, um, that takes a little more planning. So let's talk about that today. When you're looking for projects on Ravelry for to use up your odds and ends, to do, use up your leftovers, I recommend that you type in the word scrap or leftover or minis, mini skeins. A lot of projects will use mini skeins, which are not leftovers, but, but they are um, skeins with not much yardage on them, so they would be perfect. Advent is another one. A lot of um, uh, dyers do advent boxes and they might have you know 12 or 24 skeins of different colors and so they're gonna design a project that's gonna use 12 or 24 different colors in it and that's the time to go through your collection and go oh cool I can put this with this with this with this so advents another one um, modular is a really good one modular is when you're putting things together in pieces, I have a couple uh, modular projects to show you. So that's a good one to search. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I'm looking at my notes here just to make sure that I got them all. So you can do a search on Ravelry and you can you know, put those words in, figure out do you have uh, lots of sock yarn that's left over, then you're gonna put in fingering weight yarn. Um, for these projects, if you've got, if you've been doing lots of hats and maybe you've got Malabrigo Rios or Dream and Color Classy, you're going to put in worsted weight and that will bring up the worsted weight. Also know that if you take your sock yarn and you double strand it, so hold two strands together, you're going to get approximately worsted weight, um, gauge. So if you fall in love with something that's, you know, super cool all hat, um, maybe and it's in worsted weight and you only have fingering scraps we'll just hold two strands together and you will get the gauge that you need for worsted so let me show you some examples if you if your bits and bobs are um, pretty organized and you have the label with them still and can figure out how much yardage you have of each um, one that is helpful because a lot of patterns will put that you need this many yards of the main color and then you need this many yards of contrast one and this many yards of contrast two and and so on and so forth so if you know your yardage then you can just match your pieces to um, the different parts of the pattern so for example I did this a while ago this is joker in a th joker and a th thief it's got a really fun mostly garter stitch with this really fun um, stitch. The orange is a single skein, a full skein of fingering weight yarn. I want to say, I'm not, don't, don't trust me on that one. I'm not quite sure. Um, and then these, the neutrals in here are my contrast colors. And I have repeated the neutrals, so you see that there is this oatmeal color here and then the oatmeal color up here. And I think in the pattern it has you pick five or six contrasting colors and rotate through them, but there's no real reason that you need to do that. Um, you can switch colors. You can even you know, do half of this stripe in one color and half of this stripe in another color. So all sorts of fun things you can do with that. This is another one um, that I love. This is Albers Cowl uh, by Ann Weaver. And it has three different sections, you can see, um, that you sew together. You start with the center square and then you move your way around it. And so if you know how much um, yarn did you have from the different 
from your different yarns, you can figure out which colors go where, depending on the yardage requirements. So this is a sample, an example of modular knitting, and which just means that you do the square and then you attach the piece and then you pick up stitches and attach um, and work in a modular fashion. And things that are modular are put together with bits and pieces. So it's fabulous for your leftovers. This, this is another Ann Weaver pattern that's modular. They're called modular mitts. And these are really fun to do. This is definitely like playing with crayons. So you um, do the center section first and you can just play with your little bits and pieces and then this, um, then you work from there to build the, the rest of the mitten. But doing this in the center, it, it's, I really enjoyed this. It's really fun. It's fun to see, you know, kind of plan it out and see how the colors work. This is another one, the same pattern, but it's just fun to play, fun to play. And you could make mitts where this part is different. And then if you had enough, um, yarn if you had a single skein or maybe even a half skein you could make the um, main color match on the mittens where the back doesn't so very fun this is a pattern that would work really well for bits and pieces this is a pattern i designed for the yarn crawl many many i'm not so sure how many years ago but it's called the gumball hat it's a fingering weight hat and i used um, knitted whip mini skeins for the um, colors on here, but you could certainly use up all your odds and ends. And mine actually rotates through the lavender, the purple, the variegated lavender, purple, and variegated, but they don't have to match. You know, they could be all different. So, love that. Um, this hat is called Color Me Beautiful. And it's actually done with two mini skeins, or I'm sorry, two half skeins. But there's no reason that all those stripes have to match. You could use up all your leftovers. This is fingering weight. Really fun. Um, and then finally, I want you to look at patterns that aren't necessarily written for odds and ends, but are um, easy to just start another yarn at a, another point. Like maybe you have a pattern for a, um, a solid mitten or a solid sock just meant to be out of one skein and all you have to do is just do a little bit and then change your, you know, run out of that yarn, pick up a new one, keep going, run out of that yarn, pick up a new one, keep going. Um, one thing I wanna tell you is don't be too worried about if you get to the middle of a row and you've run out of yarn A, and you're ready to put in yarn B, but you're going, oh no, it's the middle of the row, I can't do that. Um, do it anyway. Your eye wants things to be equal and symmetrical and even, so your eye, well, your eye, because you did it, is gonna know that that color changes in the middle of a row, but on, you know, anybody else looking at it is never gonna notice that because their eye wants it to be equal. Um, it's a trick, but I've seen it work. Okay, and then this last one that I'm gonna show you is Windward, and this is a Heidi Kierkemer pattern. Really, really fun to do. It's one of those where you set your stitch markers and go, and then you reset your stitch markers and go some more. And this was actually done in um, a mini skein set. I believe this is Cheshire Cat. And I didn't have quite the yardage that I needed, but I just stopped and it worked out fine. I've got, this is, it's really fun to wear because you end up, I don't know if you can see that, but you end up with all these little angles on it. But even though it's written for mini skins and so you do this mini skin and then when that's done, you start the next one, there's no reason that this you know, red section couldn't be five or six different yarns. And then this next section could be another five or six different yarns. Actually, 
If I remember the pattern correctly, it, it's done in solid. It's written for a solid yarn. Um, and it's just, you've got little garter stitch sections and little stockinette sections. It's the right amount of mindless and interesting, I have to say, and a really great project to use up your scraps for. So when you see a pattern, you know, that's just all one color, go for it. Just use your scraps, mix them all together um, and see what you come up with. Come up with something really um, interesting and unique and fun. And there's something, um, I don't know, magical about using up a scrap. Um, it's kind of like when you play yarn chicken, not sure you're gonna have enough, and then you win at yarn chicken, so you only have this much left of the yarn. There's something gratifying about using the whole skein of yarn. So, hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.